Now that your coding window looks like mine, let's move on to typing the code for our first procedure. Coders use the word with a technical focus, but essentially it retains its everyday English meaning. A series of actions conducted in a certain order or manner. In our current context, the actions need to be taken by our application are described using successive lines of VBA code. The VBA editor distinguishes between a few procedure types. The one we will be most concerned with is called a subroutine, or just sub for short. Subs are a general programming concept which Wikipedia summarizes as a sequence of program instructions that performs a specific task packaged as a unit. This unit can then be used in programs wherever that particular task should be performed. Using either a brand new Excel file or the one provided for this lecture, we can script our first sub by typing directly into the coding window and following a few simple steps. Type in sub, follow that with a label or name of your choice, mine's hello world, and then hit return. You'll notice a line with end sub automatically appears beneath it. This first line declares our subprocedure. It tells the IDE that this procedure exists and it is identified by the label hello world. The substatement also marks the line where this procedure begins. And so just as we need to mark the beginning of the procedure, we need to mark where it ends. And that's what the end substatement does, which is why it's automatically provided. Only code typed in between these statements will be considered part of that sub. Sub and end sub are VBA native statements, so they display in keyword formatting. Hello World identifies the sub so that displays as identifier text. And you'll see this pair of yellow brackets in yellow normal text formatting, which have appeared next to the identifier. These brackets are part of the correct VBA syntax for sub declarations. Remember that this means they have to be included in order for that statement to be recognized. But don't worry about having to remember them. Since there's literally nothing else you can do on a line which starts with sub except for declare a procedure, the editor fills them in automatically. Look, try and delete them, and you can't. For a long time, I just thought this rule was weird since it looked like the brackets were just there for decoration. But it turns out they do have an awesome and important purpose, which we'll come to later on. Now, let's declare a variable. This tells the IDE that that variable exists and a specific memory address is created to store its data. In a simple sense, that's all that variables are just labeled stores of data. The fact that these data values can vary is why we call it a variable. Variables are a little more sophisticated than that, however, because we can define and restrict which kind of data the variable is able to store. In our case, we want a variable which can contain data in the form of text, and so the data type specifically suited to this is known as a string. We do this all on a single line by typing in the command dim str message greeting as string, where dim is the variable declaration keyword. Let's take a moment to explain how I named my string variable. We all know the importance of good labeling from our experience in financial modeling. We use an entire column just for the purpose of labeling our data and making sure we and our users know what it is and what it does. In our coding environment, we are much more restricted. The majority of the time, we only have the name of the variable itself to help to explain what it does. It would be impractical to type up entire sentences, but we do benefit from providing some information, so we compromise. We start by entering three letters which abbreviate the data type of our variable. It's going to be a string, so str it is. Following that, we're going to make clear this string is going to be used as a message, so let's follow with msg. Finally, this message is going to be a greeting, so let's add greeting to the end, and there we have it. 
you'll notice that I created the label with a mix of lower and uppercase letters. Don't worry, VBA code is not case sensitive. If I type out the variable again, all in lower case, you'll see that the editor automatically capitalizes the characters to match the definition. This happens as well for VBA keywords. The use of mixed case type enables us to create multi-word labels without having to use the underscore. And because the editor matches our capitalization to that provided in the original definition, we can use this feature as a weak error check to make sure we have typed in our variable names correctly. If we enter them with some typo, the text won't auto-capitalize in this way. Starting the variable name with a code matched to its data type has two purposes. First, every time we reference the variable, we are aware of what data type it is. That reduces the risk of errors. Secondly, this system makes it so much easier to work on code with large numbers of variables. Let's quickly demonstrate this by creating a couple more string variables. Now, imagine you're coding and you remember you want a string variable you declared earlier, but you can't remember what it's called. If you've been using this kind of naming system for your variables, knowing that you're looking for a string is enough. Thanks to a tool called the IntelliSense prompt. I cannot understate how amazing this tool is, and I almost cry thinking about how many hours I've lost working in the VBA editor before I knew about its existence. Hit Control Space to bring it up. OK, it brings up a list. So far, so boring. Now type in the first three letters we're using for our string variables. There. The list is alphabetically ordered, and we've jumped all the way down to the items which begin with str. Let's look for our string variable and highlight string message greeting and hit the tab key. Boom! It's auto-filled. Now, obviously, I'm doing this slowly for demonstration purposes, but take a moment to think how much time that is going to save you when you're working at speed. What about the rest of the items in this list? What are they? Well, they are a list of recognized code terms that are available for you to choose from, from variables to commands and so on. And this tool is even more powerful than it first appears. Let's go to the stray debug command which I commented out and bring it back. Left like this, it's nonsense in VBA. So let's load the IntelliSense prompt after the dot to help us out. Now we only have two items on the list. That's because the list only presents you with the two options which are syntactically permitted at this point in the code. In fact, the IntelliSense prompt sometimes appears automatically, as you see it does when you type in the debug command afresh. Don't forget that you can autofill by striking the tab key at any point. Now, I won't claim this only show what's allowed next feature is perfect. It does fail on the odd occasion by leaving out possible options, but that only occurs when I'm using less common items of code. So I find myself able to rely on it the majority of the time, and you should definitely consider it a reliable tool in your arsenal. The fact that the list of options represents proper VBA syntax means it can also be a helpful tool for you to explore what the options are with your coding. Back to our sub. We gave our string variable a value by using the equal symbol and then following it with text inside double quotation marks. This is the standard syntax for defining string values in your code. Remember that if you use a single quotation mark or apostrophe, you mark the text to the right of it as a comment which is ignored by the editor. Comments are important, so let's add one here as an example of good practice. It's often helpful to start with a description of the intended purpose of the procedure. So I enter the following text. This code will display a greeting to users. I do not need to close off the comment. Everything after the apostrophe on the same line is ignored by the editor when the code eventually runs. It is only present as visible text to people viewing the code in this window. This syntax means I can add a comment to the end of specific lines, which can help make the code more readable. 
Now that we've defined our message, let's use an inbuilt VBA function called messagebox, shortened as musgbox, to display our message to our users. Messagebox is your friend and you will use it over and over to help communicate with your users, as well as offering a useful tool to debug your code. The simplest way to use it is just to type in musgbox and follow that with a string variable you want it to display. And here we're finally at the moment of truth. Position the blinking text cursor somewhere inside the sub, hit F5 to execute the code in run mode, and there you have it, your first procedure.